Hey y'all, my name is Jared Smith. I'm the pastor of Highland City Church here in LAJ, Georgia. Some of you may know me online, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, as Jared Montana. So that is my name also. Jared Montana Smith is my full name. But I recognize that some of you may not know who Highland City Church is. So I want to make a video to describe who we are, what we do, what we're about, stuff along those lines. And I'm going to divide this video up into two parts. One, my calling specifically as the senior pastor. And then secondly, Highland City Church's vision and mission. So to dive right into it, the first part of who I am, my calling. I was saved when I was 14. I was raised in a loving Christian household. Saved when I was 14, I read the book of Revelation. Actually, kind of uh, God allowed fear to be the driving force to drive me towards his sustaining love. Uh, throughout high school years, I was constantly trying to, you know, my will against his. I was headbutting God's will there. And, and finally, when I was 20, God humbled me and... I fell down to my knees and surrendered my will and gave it all to him. And, and so it was around that time that God called me to be a pastor. Uh, it's kind of funny, though, because growing up, the elders of my dad's church, he was a pastor. The elders would come up to me and say, you're going to be a pastor someday. And I had seen what being a pastor was like, of course, through my dad. And, and I swore up and down, hand over fist, I would never be a pastor. Never say never, right? Sing it, Bieber. Uh, anyways, if you catch the reference, you catch it. But... <clears throat> God has a sense of humor. I, of course, became a pastor. And furthermore, with that, I actually around that time of recognizing that God has called me to be a pastor, specifically to be a church planter. If you don't know what a church plant is, it's basically like starting a new church. And when God had told me to plant a church in my youthful arrogance, I was about 20 at that time, which just for reference, I'm almost 25 now. And in my youthful arrogance, I didn't think to stop and pray about where and when. Instead, I, instead, I just decided to try to plant there and then. And I, at the time, I was in Dahlonega, Georgia, and I was in a college town. I was attending University of North Georgia at the time, and, and it was the fall semester before COVID, I think. And we had gotten about 10 people coming over the course of a couple months, and then people left for Christmas break, and then nobody ever came back because of COVID. So it was a crash and burn, utter failure, and... It led me to be discouraged, to doubt if that had even been what God had called me to do. And I was embarrassed by it. And so I didn't tell anybody within the church context for a while because shortly after that, I became a youth pastor. Didn't tell that pastor I tried to plant a church. And uh, anyways, so I get a new job because at the time I was working as an EMT, I was on an ambulance and in an ER. And then God moved me away from that area through a different job. It was a sales job. Never had any sales experience practically. And so it was kind of cool what God was doing. But anyways, brought me back to my hometown in Noonan, Georgia, where I started attending Crossroads Church. And it was through Crossroads where, long story short, the pastor there took me up under his wing, started to disciple me through an impact series, which I'll talk about that later. And just for reference, I was teaching the Bible before I joined an impact group. But I grew so much in both knowledge and in my personal walk because of what Christ showed me through the impact series. So I believe with every ounce of my being that everybody should go through an impact group, impact series, and they are incredibly beneficial. Again, I'll talk more about what an impact group is later, but towards the end of, by the time I really finished impact, the pastor sat me down. As a long story short, I actually proposed a poverty alleviation program for the church to employer, sorry, employ, and he closed the computer. If you know anything about Pastor Ken, he sometimes he says that Satan will offer us good better and best and sometimes he offers us good to keep us from the best and so he closed my computer and said jared this is good but it's not what's best and so he then goes on to describe how god had been telling him that it felt like uh, he was feeling like god was telling him that i was meant to plant a church and so he told me that and i said who told you that <laughs> it's like uh and so I then explained to him, I was like, it's funny you say that, you know, God called me to plant a church. I tried, utterly failed. I've been embarrassed. That's why you didn't know if you hear my baby cooing in the background. And through that, you okay? So once having that conversation with him, of course, my wife and I went into prayer and fasting. And long story short, we recognized that now is the time to start preparing to plant a church. And through that prayer, we we're also trying to figure out location. You know, I told God, I said, God, I'll go anywhere but Georgia. Get me out of Georgia. We're looking at Texas, Arizona, Oregon, Montana, even for a second. And so it seemed like we were really narrowing it down to Arizona and Texas. And and I never really had a piece about it. Long story short, uh, Ella J came into question. And again, I said, God, I'll never, just get me out of Georgia. Long story short, through multiple confirmations, God 
called us to plant a church in LAJ, Georgia. So that's why we're here. Since we've been here, it's been a wild ride. I mean, I could go into the specifics about how God has got us here. I don't, it would take me 30 minutes to explain that, maybe even longer, and I'm gonna refrain. So with that being said though, in the first two months here, I mean, we've had three salvations, another person rededicated his life. And so those four people have gotten baptized and we've gotten 40 people plugged into an impact group just in the first two months. And it's just a wild ride. I, I feel like I'm riding a wave and I don't know if I know how to surf. So maybe I started off on a surfboard, but maybe I'm just body surfing at this point. I don't know, but I'm just riding a wave and it's amazing. It's so cool to be an instrument that God is using in, in LAJ. But um, I say all that to say this. In Luke chapter six, verse 40, it says that a student is never greater than their teacher but once they're fully trained, they will be like their teacher. Within Christianity, uh, I think when people read that, they might uh, misappropriate that text or misuse that text to say, oh, we should be like their, their pastor, which I guess is not necessarily misusing it because in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. I personally, because that's a bold statement. I personally am not gonna say that about myself. I'm not gonna say imitate me because you know I imitate Christ. Uh, which I do strive to imitate Christ, but I'm just going to tell you to follow Christ instead of following me, okay? Uh, follow me to Christ. How about that? So with that being said, I think it's important that you know who you are following because as a senior pastor, I am leading this church towards Christ. And, uh, you know, Christ has given this flock of Highland City Church and entrusting them to me to, to nourish and take care of. And I fully intend to do well with the, the talents that God has given me, as uh, steward it well. And by talents, I mean the flock here. So, if that's why I told you my story, because I do think it's important that you know my story to recognize uh, that calling for Highland City Church. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Highland City's plan as a church, the mission. Of course, we're based off of the Great Commission, which is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And remember, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. That's Matthew 28, 19 through 20. So the core there is make disciples that's the goal and then you have the modifiers there which is baptizing teaching trusting obeying uh, remembering so um anyways go and make disciples that's what the crux of of uh, highland city church is now how do we do that uh going back to luke 640 the teacher there is christ and so what we're trying to do is model our disciples towards christ and if i were to go around to all the mcdonald's across the world and I would ask them, how do you make a Big Mac? And then show me the process of making a Big Mac. Every single McDonald's across the world would give me the exact same process. And they would detail how to make the exact same Big Mac. But if I were to go to every single church, and this is a failure, by the way, in my opinion. If I were to go to every single church, even just within the context of like LJ, Georgia, Tennessee, anywhere. I think that they would uh, each give us a different definition of what a Big Mac is, a disciple is. They give us a different definition of a disciple. And then secondly to that, I think that they would tell us different routes or strategies on how to make disciples. So I think that that's a failure. Um, and what Impact Series does is it models, it rather it walks you through how Jesus uh, discipled his disciples. And so basically what it does is it copies the strategies that Jesus used to make disciples. And so that's what we do. That's what the impact series does. And so the answer to the problem that I just laid out, if I were to define what a disciple is, I would say a disciple is somebody who strives towards the character and conduct of Christ. Again, because Luke 640 says that a student will be like their teacher once they're fully trained. And so if we're to be like the teacher, the teacher being Jesus, then we should be like Jesus in character and conduct. Now, what do I mean by character? Character is who you are. I think a good summary of that is, uh, not Acts, I'm sorry. Galatians chapter 5, it's the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then conduct is what you do. So um, a good summary of that is the seven marks. You'll get in that as you go through impact. I'll talk about that later some more. But the seven marks or the seven M's are found in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. So with that being said, the purpose of impact is to build up disciples through the, the shared mission, that's the Great Commission, the, through a shared strategy, it's the strategy that Jesus employed and done with a shared passion. This is a passion that I will uh, share and give and uh, the goal is for you to then take on that passion. Because what good is having a shared mission and a shared strategy if you don't have the passion to motivate you, you know what I'm saying? What good is a, a shared mission and a shared passion if you have no strategy? What good is a shared passion and strategy with no mission? Uh, it's the perfect uh, trinity within disciple making in my opinion. So. 
with all that being said, um, that's the the crux of the mission of Highland City Church. Now, to sound like Martin Luther King Jr., I do also have a dream in that Highland City Church becomes the heart of LJ and that LJ, I hope someday that if Highland City were to cease existing, I want LJ to not know what to do because Highland City is so involved in the community. For example, when I, because I've, I've been in and around this community. I mean, I married into a woman that was from Blue Ridge, so I've been in and around this area for a while. And I wouldn't know that there's a church here had I not seen their buildings, which is kind of sad. And so a part of my vision that I have is that I want to create a network of, of pastors in this area to where we uh, all work together as the body of Christ to serve our communities. Because it seems like the churches are constrained within their four walls and they're not breaking out. So here soon, you're going to be seeing at the very least Highland City Church active in the community, uh, benefiting in some way. Now, how are we going to be in the community? Uh, basically, we're going to be solving the problems that the, the community has. I don't know necessarily what problems there are, but uh, from the people I've talked to and, and interviewed and asked, uh, it seems like there's a substance abuse issue. <clears throat> there's a broken family unit issue. And so just looking at those two points right there, how do we solve those problems? I think that any problem in the world, and this goes for any problem, is solved through proper discipleship. So for example, with a broken family unit, I think that if somebody is striving towards the character and conduct of Christ, that they are walking as Jesus walked, as First John talks about, then they're striving towards imitating Jesus. I think that they will strive to be a better husband, strive to be a better wife, a better father, a better parent, a better child, a better sibling. <clears throat> and so if you were to have the problem of a broken family unit, I think proper discipleship would solve that problem. In addition to that, if we were to look at the other example we're provided with substance abuse or any kind of abuse, really, um, if you are struggling with, say, alcoholism, which is a big problem here in the, the Appalachian Mountains, if you're struggling with alcoholism, I think that's solved through proper discipleship as well. When you believe you have the Holy Spirit living within you, which, by the way, we are saved by grace through faith, and as a result of our faith, we will do good deeds. So, uh, in other words, we love because God first loved us, and so as uh, the way that we show our love for God is by doing good things, good works. So again, just to reiterate, we're saved by grace through faith. As a result of that God-given grace out of love for God, we do things. For example, in John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you obey all that I've commanded you. Jesus commands us to go and make disciples, amen? So that's what we do. Uh, but in addition to that, I'll say that the substance abuse thing, I mean, when we believe we have the Holy Spirit coming live within us and a byproduct of the Holy Spirit living within us is self-control. It's the, the, the ninth characteristic found in the fruits of the Spirit. So um, if you strive towards the character and conduct of Christ, you're going to embody that self-control and you're going to sooner or later, it's called sanctification. It's the growth aspect throughout the rest of your life, but you'll sooner or later get to the point where you will be able to um, break free from that alcoholism. That was my baby in the background. Uh, the big vision is, of course, disciple-making. I want to be a disciple-making church. I want to be a church that plants churches. After all, we are a church plant, and if you don't know what a church plant is, it's just a church, a starting, starting a church, a new church. And I want to be a church that starts churches because, I mean, we've already got 40 people in an impact group properly being discipled, and I think that that's a great method of disciple-making, is planting churches that then branch out and create more disciples. It's just a great method. So, We've got a, a lot of ideas on uh, disciple making and on top of that, just programs and stuff like that, but they're all gonna be geared around disciple making. So that's a little bit about who we are, what we do, what we're about. And I could talk way more about this, but if you wanna get plugged into Highland City Church, we're currently not gathering on Sundays. Today is actually September 19th, 2023. Not gathering on Sunday mornings yet. Our first Sunday service is actually gonna be January 14th of 2024. So be there, be squared. But if you do want to get involved, join an impact group. We are currently gathering for impact at 33 Rose Petal Lane, uh, Suite 101 in Ella J, Georgia. That's 30540. And I want you to join to be a part of that. That starts at 6 p.m. Dinner starts at 6. I uh, start talking around 6.15, 6.30. And then we get into small groups for impact around 6.45 to 7. So, And that goes until about 8, 8.30. So. Uh, but if Wednesday doesn't work, doesn't work for you, still reach out, and we're, we're about to start impact groups on every day of the week. So uh, if we'll find a good time for you uh, to get plugged in so you can be properly discipled. So that's uh, what, what else we've got going on. This Friday, we've got a fall festival coming up. But we're going to be doing a lot of events coming up. Again, we're going to be in the community, serving the community, and all that fun jazz. So thank you all for watching, and let me just pray real quick. And then if you're interested in joining Highland City Church, please reach out, message us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, what have you, or if you found this video because somebody referred you to it and uh, just talk to them about it. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity of faith that you've given us, Lord. And 
you're worthy of our praise. Not only just for what you've done, God, just who you are. You are so worthy. And Lord, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross to save us from our sins. We're so undeserving of that. But God, thank you. God, I pray that uh, I not lead with human wisdom, God, but like Solomon, I pray for the wisdom so that I can lead well. Lead your church well, God. But not only like Solomon, God, I want to pray in addition to that wisdom for faithfulness because Solomon lacked faithfulness, which is why he led Israel into idolatry, God. So I just pray that uh, you give me the wisdom and then also the faithfulness to live out that wisdom. God, continue to uh, guide us, guard us, protect us, Lord. Give us the strength to pick up our feet so that as our feet may fall, Lord, that you guide our steps so that we can uh, follow your will, do your will, and glorify you in all that we do. God, I want to thank you for this church, the people watching this video. Continue to mold our hearts, soften our hearts, because God, I just want us all to glorify you. Help us to lead more people to you, and all those things we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you all for watching. Uh, again, my name is Jared Smith, a pastor here at Highland City Church, but if you want me to pray for you in any way, just reach out. I'd be happy to pray for you, so Godspeed.